Hi, how's it going, PD team? I've got an illuminating video for you today. We're going to be making a custom flicker texture node, a drag and drop plug and play tool for when you need a little bit of excitement in your materials. It's great for flickering neon signs, logo animations, overhead lights, FUI elements, and much, much more. We'll be adding controls like flicker speed, looping, contrast, a custom curvature control, and even a flicker checker tool for dialing things in. This will be a fun one and is incredibly useful. Everyone should have this in their node preset library for easy use. With that being said, let's dive in. So here's the flicker node that we're going to be creating, the custom flicker node. You put an input into it and then it outputs an output of a flickered material. So we have a couple controls. We've got the speed, which is obvious. Then we have a loop feature, which allows us to loop it. So if I have a three second clip, I just plug in three in here and so on. Then we have a contrast, which allows us to add contrast to the texture so we get less sloping. And if you need more control, we have below a curvature control. So if I want my texture to have a longer hold, we can just drag this out and it'll stay brighter for longer. And same with the base slope, which allows us to have more black space in the flicker. Then we have a randomize, which allows us to randomly change the way it flickers. So if you have two elements next to each other, you can add a randomize to it to make sure that they don't match. And then lastly, we have this show flicker, which overrides the material and allows us to better see how the flicker is working. So if I hit play, you can see it's showing us how that flicker will work. Now in the IPR, it doesn't update is detailed. It's not a one for one frame rate. So if you want to get a better understanding, you're going to have to render it out. But this just helps us better see how long those gaps are and troubleshooting. So with that being said, let's build this thing out. OK, so I've started with a standard material. I've applied it to my plane object. I've loaded up a texture and I've loaded the texture into the color channel and the emission color channel. And if you scroll down, I brought up the weight to 1.5. And next, what we want to do is we want to right click and create a group. Give it a name. I've called mine PD Flicker. Give it a color. Get rid of the preview. And then what we want to do is we want to plug in our texture into the input and our output from the emission input into the output of our node. Now they're not connected yet. And what we want to do is our foundation is going to be using a max on noise. So I'm going to double click max on noise. And with our max on noise, we're going to be including a couple of inputs. The first one we want to do is we want to have speed in here. We want to have loop period. We want scale and we want contrast. And what I like doing is I like inside of here setting up a group that's going to take in all of the controls. So I'm going to go to empty group and I'm just going to call this controls. Give it a color. And for our noise, what we want to do is we want to set this to 10,000. So we're making the noise extremely large and we almost forgot to bring in the seed. So go ahead and add seed as well. So control click and we're going to plug in our seed into the input speed loop period. Overall scale will keep out and we're going to plug in contrast. So I'm going to add a value. I'm going to call this scale fix. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this node as a fix in case our noise isn't large enough. I'll show you here in a second. But our value we want to set to integers and set it to 10,000 thousand and plug it into the overall scale. Next, what we want to do is we want a custom curvature control. So I'm going to add a ramp and I'm going to use the scalar ramp, call it custom curve. We're going to plug this into here and our curve. We're going to add the ramp in. So I'm going to control click the dot where it says ramp. And we're going to plug this into our node. Now to get this to work properly, what we want to do is we want to bring this in here, but we need one intermediate controller and that's going to be our layer color layer. And we want the base black. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in this in as a mask and our texture is going to go into this controller layer one color and our mask is going to be a noise that's going to flicker into this and then spit us out the value. So next what we want to do is we want to go into our controls and enable these. So I'm going to click, click, so now we can select this and here's our controls. So I'm going to set the speed to 100, add a little bit of contrast. I'll go to 0.5. You can see here's our ramp and our seed. So these are the settings that I put. Let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to go to my IPR, start it up, hit play. And you can see with the scale, we get kind of a wishy-washy where it kind of like animates from one angle into the next. And that's because we're using a large noise to do this. So you can set the scale even larger. It kind of depends on how big your object is that you want to flicker. You don't want to just go setting it to 100,000 because your flicker will not animate properly. So you kind of want to go by what looks best. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. So you made it this far. Clearly, you're enjoying the content. Would you consider clicking the thanks button on this video to help grow the channel's community so I can make more great content just for you? Any amount is greatly appreciated. If money is tight right now, then do me a favor and just smash that like button immediately. Now, back to the video. If you don't like this washed out animation where it looks like it's scaling from different directions, you can go to your controller and bring up the fixed scale and bring this up 50,000. And there 
there you go, it's gone now. Okay, so next what we wanna do is we wanna add the checker that allows us to see the animation without the texture. So to do that, we're gonna take our custom curve output, which is our final output, and add it to the color of layer two. And then we'll just steal this node, change it to Boolean, plug it in, and we'll call this checker. So now what we can do is we can leave it checked, go to our preview. And what we wanna do is on the checker here, we wanna enable it and we plugged it into the wrong one. So we're gonna delete the mask. We're gonna add it to this one here, the enable. So it should look all white when it's checked. So you can see it's white now and there's our flicker. So now we have a checkbox for the flicker previewer. So this is what we have so far. So next what we wanna do is we wanna expose these properties in our base. So when we come out here, we're gonna be able to select this and see our properties on the base of this node. So we'll go back inside and we'll do this in the order that we want them. So I want the material first. So I'll rename it to flicker. And we'll rename the output to flicker. And first what we want is we want speed first, loop period second, contrast, the ramp. And then we want our checkbox for the flicker checker. So you can see when I just select the background here, it's showing us the root of this node. And you can see there's our controls. So this looks great. So we can come in here and add a custom curve in here to kind of guide the user, something like that. So now you can see when we select it, there's our controls. Now in my demo, what I did is I added a, a color correct node and I just brought in the contrast. So it only got the brightest of the texture. So you can add that. And you could add this inside if you wanted and put controls for this. So you could put like highlight features and whatnot. You could really build this up, but I like having it outside. So let's go ahead and check it out. And there's our flicker. It's working. And so when you play it, you can see that some parts are flickering that are in this grayer value. So that color contrast node, the color correct node will help fix that. So you can isolate just these brighter areas to get the right flicker that you want for your project. One last thing I like to do is I like to get rid of these inputs on the node itself. And there's our cleaned up node ready to rock. So what you can do is you can take a copy of it, control drag, and then right click on it, go to asset, convert to asset, and save it in your preset nodes that you've already built out. And then that way you have the original right here that you can edit and change. Because once you convert it into an asset, this is not editable. I like keeping the original, but if it's already converted, you can go to asset and say edit as group. But I like keeping the original and a preset made. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Get flickering. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.